this debt ceiling deal did get passed and uh, House uh, Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy uh, seems pretty uh, pleased with himself. Here we go. I believe in looking after America first. More than two thirds of our conference voted for it. We got all the Democrats who signed a discharge petition to say they would never raise the debt ceiling, only raise it clean. We got them to vote for it too. So think about how much further we can go. I told you then, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Each week, we have stood up for the American public, be it its strongest border security. We put the citizens of America first. And we didn't do it by taking the easy way. We didn't do it by the ways that people did it in the past, by just lifting it. We decided that you had to spend less and we achieved that goal. All right, before we all jump into that, uh, let's go to another Republican who did not vote for it, uh, Texas Congressman Chip Roy. My colleagues, be very clear, not one Republican should vote for this deal. It is a bad deal. No one sent us here to borrow an additional $4 trillion to get absolutely nothing in return. But at best, if I'm being really generous, a spending freeze for a couple of years. That's it. That's about what you get. And frankly, you're going to make things worse. And my Democratic colleagues know it. That's why they're supporting it. Mm -hmm. That's why they're going around gleeful. Look, there's a reason our Democrat colleagues support this. There's a reason that Mitt Romney supports this. There's a reason that Bill Kristol supports this. It's all the same stuff. Kyle, it strikes me that they're both telling the truth to a degree. McCarthy's like, hey, the Democrats wanted some really crazy crap. They didn't get all that. And then Chip's like, no, it's still, uh, you know, you know, low to turd, basically. Well, I'm just I'm just tired of the gaslighting. It just reminds me of like you're on a tight budget and your wife goes out shopping and she uses the credit card that is almost maxed out to buy you know, a dress for $200 and she comes back and tells you, well, it wasn't $300. I saved us $100. <laughs> no, it, it, you know, it's not like we're making money off of this. You're spending uh, money that we don't have on things that we don't need, which is really the concern of a lot of taxpayers. So the federal budget, the funny, the interesting thing about all of this is that you look at the IRS. I think that's a great one, the, the IRS staffing. So they were able to cut a, a little bit of the budget, like 10, like it was like 12% of the, yeah, it's, of it's the proposed nothing. budget. Yeah. But the interesting thing about that is if you look at the Biden administration's arguments for this hiring more agents over the course of 10 years, they want to recoup $200 billion or so from the richest people in order to pay for the climate scan <laughs> for uh, mm -hmm. carbon energy uh, credits and, and you know, uh, cl green initiatives and so on. My heart and my brain are with Chip, like this is just more nonsense. We know nothing is gonna be resolved or get better or anything. And then the purely, the part of me that just understands politics is like, well, McCarthy, if he doesn't do a deal, basically we know the Republicans get blamed for it and likely we do end up in a recession and most of us don't want to end up in a recession. Is this just kind of why politics both sucks and blows? Yes, it is. It is why politics sucks and blows. Um, but also you have to remember that 46 progressive Democrats also voted against this bill and claimed that, you know, Biden had given up too much. 